It is Saturday, July 12th, 2020. Just finished doing some street stand-up, and that was one of the better street stand-up sessions I've, I've um, done, actually. Um, I, was, uh, I was talking to the owner of the state. What's up, Billy? I'm going to tag you in this or something so you listen. Uh, I was talking to the owner of the state and some of their employees, and my intention going in was, you know, after, after the, the whole thing with KJ and like trying to, trying to turn down the, the, I don't know, maybe I need to gather my thoughts here. Hold on a second. All right. So watching KJ do his thing and doing it on the street with him, keeping it light, like watching him after some time had gone by, it, I think it clicked a little more. I was talking about that earlier and so I was trying to do that on the street tonight, and I think I told uh, Billy and the gang. Uh, well, let me see. Let me see if I don't fuck everyone's name up. Uh, Blake, dude, you need to work on your drinking. Uh, <laughs> I can, uh, Blake, uh, um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I want to say, I know it's not Mario. I know, I want to say it's Marcos. Um, Daniel. I think that was it. I think that was the gang. Anyway, so I'm... T- <laughs> this is so fucking dumb. Uh, so so I'm talking to them, and I'm telling them, like, I just want to... I'm trying to be light. I'm trying to be light. And when I made the decision to do it, I was able to ride that... I've, I've never been... I've been, uh, I've been surfing once, but I don't know. Does it count if you never even stand up on the board? Like, every time you get on the board, you just fall in immediately. Like, I don't, I don't think that counts, but... I would imagine it's similar to what surfing feels like or being a skateboarder or whatever, or being in the zone where you can feel like, oh, I'm going to roll here. There's, there's, there's some comfort. And usually when I would, when I would uh, be on the street and I would feel that roll, I would fall out of it. It was like, as soon as I was away, it's like when you're in a dream You know when you're in a dream and you know, you're walking around, you're doing your thing and then you, it, something clicks you realize you're in a dream, you're like, oh, cows aren't supposed to fly or, or whatever. You realize you're in a dream. That's kind of how it feels uh, when, I'm in a, when I'm in a groove. But this time, it worked still. Like, I, I was aware I was in a groove, and I was able to stay in the groove while being aware of it, which was good. Uh, every now and again, I would, I would sign a slip out of it. Uh, but I was able to, to get back into it, so that feels good. And I think a big part of that was seeing, like, being on stage with KJ, or being on the street with KJ, and seeing another comedian. I didn't, like, you know, watching a comedy special is not like watching another comic at the same space that you're in. It it feels completely different. Uh, It feels disconnected. But I haven't, like, I've been so insulated in myself, I haven't seen any other comedians, which is leading me to believe when open mics start up again, or when I start up my open mics again, I can't only rely on street stand-up. Obviously, it's a it's a good tool, and I'm going to keep utilizing it, but whenever, I, I got to make sure I'm versatile in every capacity, and that includes the environment. But right now, I just got to make do. Um, so I think, yeah, seeing KJ, like physically seeing him... Um, be loose just helped me click into it a little better, which was good. And it feels like uh, uh, I'm watching Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yo, the shit is dope. Oh, it's so good. It's on. Honestly, it's on some Breaking Bad level good. And it's short. It's like short, sweet to the point. Yo, you gotta watch Avatar if you have. It's just been out for like a, a decade. Um, but I'm watching Avatar and watching Aang learn, watching him learn slowly feels very... I mean, I was comparing it to My Hero Academia as well with, with Deku. But watching him learn slowly and pick up tricks along the way, uh, it, it makes me feel better and I just relate to it really well. Like... If, I, if I'm to compare myself to a to an airbender, this has become the nerdiest podcast of all time, I think. I think it just reached that level. I think it passed Nostalgia Critic. It passed fucking Nerd Sync. It passed Every Frame of Painting. This is officially the nerdiest one. It passed Cracked.com. 
or wisecracked, almost like, what was it, uh, film theory, just really, uh, death battle, just, just nerdy shit, anyway, <laughs> what can I say, okay, so when I, when I compare the Avatar stuff, if I'm to compare myself to Aang, and like, let's say KJ to another, no, you know what a better comparison would be? It would be uh, Prince Prince Zuko, Prince Zuko, and and uh, what's his name? Uncle Ira. I think that would be a more apt comparison in terms of the type of relationship based off all the characters I've seen so far. But this isn't supposed to become an analysis of Avatar, Aaron. You should probably get back to the fucking point. All right, Aaron, you need to chill out, man. You chill out talking all that shit, bro. You don't know who you're talking to, man. <laughs> All right. So, Avatar. Um, yeah, if, I, if I'm to compare it to when, when Aang is learning stuff, there's like a sloppiness. There's like a lack of refinement. Um, okay. It's like when you watch Aang fight in the first season. There's this... It's wild. It feels instinctual. It feels like he's just going off of raw intuition and then as the as the seasons go on you can really feel him being more precise there's a level of control about him and that's kind of where I'm at like when I was doing it on the street with KJ I could tell that there's very it's very measured it's very in control it doesn't seem like it to the audience the audience feels this loosey goosey feeling but when I'm watching him I'm like oh okay I know I, I know what you're doing and I can see you pulling the strings there. Uh, like, for instance, there's this joke he has that I know requires him to kind of move around a lot. And he started go. I could see him start going into it. And so I moved out of the way or whatever, and I let him do his thing. We even made eye I remember making eye contact with him and knowing immediately, like, oh, you're going into this bit. You need space. Um, so I think that's good. I think that's a good sign when the, I can see the strings a lot easier. And I seem to be able to to emulate and move those strings a little bit. I think I just got to keep practicing. So this mentality of keeping it lighthearted on the street is what I'm going to keep trying to do. And I also realized tonight that in talking with uh, Billy and the gang from the state, um, in talking to those guys, I realized that we can talk about the subjects I want to talk about. I just need to make those subjects funny. I know that sounds obvious, you're fucking obviously, yeah, yeah, man, that's what, that's what your job is, you're a comedian, but there, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again, sometimes when something needs to click, it might even need to click more times than this, but as of right now, just this, this clicking of, of, um, knowing that I can still talk about the things I want to talk about, I just got to make them funny. When I was out there with KJ, the stuff that we were talking about, it was like really mundane. It was mundane, it was silly, it was inoffensive. And that's KJ, not, that's not necessarily KJ's vibe. He's not like Seinfeld or anything. But the old Hannibal Burris copying ass nigga. This little nigga think he Hannibal Burris. <laughs> Are you trying to be in tag too? You want to replace Hannibal Burris? Like how they re replaced Day Day with Smokey? All right, what are we, what are we talking about? Um, uh, fuck, I'm driving some fucking idiot. He's driving like a fucking idiot. Um, I'm not mad. Stay calm, stay chill. Uh, yeah, so I was talking with him. We were talking about heavy subject matter. Uh, one of the dudes was talking about me using the word faggot in a joke, and so we had a really long, these get, and we had a really long discussion about why I use the word and the way I use the word and how comedy works and all that stuff. And I was, sometimes I forgot, you know, like I'm still trying to fine tune these skills, but I was still able to keep it light. Like usually when we get in these topics, it stays in this kind of dark, it's still interesting. People are still uh, engaged with it, but it's not funny. It becomes more of a TED talk than a comedy thing. So I just got to remember to keep adding, just add a little jokes, just add a little sweetener when I'm talking about this stuff. Um, and I think that's gonna just come with time and practice. So that's where I'm at. I think it was probably one of the better street stand-ups I, I had. 
So thank you guys. And again, shout out to the state in Redlands. Um, yeah.